Hi. Hello, everybody. Just gonna wait for people to join in. Hi, Aditya. Hi, controversial Capricorn. Hey, Leia. Always so nice to see you here. Thank you. Hi, Nishad. So, I mean, today, I, firstly, I know we are doing this episode after quite some time, but I had decided that any subject matter that I will take up has to be something that uh, definitely affects me at, of course, an either an a spiritual level, an emotional level, or an, or an intellectual level. Either it challenges that or either it um, amplifies it, right? So that's the reason why I've been having some gaps between the episodes as well. Uh, not only to self-reflect on what I want to speak about, but also to find the perfect guest as well. And I'm, I'm so glad that our guest today agreed to do this. And I'm very much looking forward to speaking to her. But before I, I go ahead with that and I introduce her, I just wanted to talk about or just give context to why we're talking about poetry today. Right? Because poetry has been a very, very integral part of our society. So even before... Um, like du during the Olympics, when it was played in Greece and when it started off in Greece, there used to be like two stadiums, right? One stadium would be for the sportsmen playing sports and the other stadium would be for the poets. And, you know, I've, I've, I've walked around the streets of Romania as well and there are statues of poets everywhere and poetry is so integrated in people's lives. And even in India, in the south of India, in Tamil Nadu, there is a 133 feet statue of a poet and philosopher called Thiruvalluvar. I've written it down because I always mess up the pronunciation, but yes. So poetry is, and poets have always had a say and have had a um, great stature in culture. Right? I, I somewhere do feel, and this probably comes from a place of bias as well, but I don't think we are teaching children or we are just teaching people to write poetry. I think uh, barring a couple of schools and institutions, there's not enough places where poetry is propagated enough. But fortunately, I think because of social media especially, we get access to people who do write beautifully. And that's how I actually discovered Kavya Sharma as well. And she's going to be joining us today and we're going to talk about poetry from the lens of culture, of course, but poetry's place in the world. So just a little bit about Kavya. Kavya Sharma is firstly the editor-in-chief of a literary magazine called Verses of Silence. Uh, Kavya calls herself a womanist. She's a poet and fiction author. She has authored two books, a poetry collection, The Kama in Memories, and a fiction novel, To Nadia. Her poems have been featured in multiple anthologies, including 97 poems by Terribly Tiny Tales, A Map Called Home by Kitab Singapore, The Seven Transgressions by half Baked Beans, to name a few. She was among the 100 most inspiring authors of India 2018 by the Indian Nawaz. Her interviews have appeared in various newspapers like Deccan Chronicle, The Sunday Guardian, The Pioneer, BBC Nottingham Radio and elsewhere. She works as a creative writing trainer for publishing houses, schools, and NGOs. And this is this is just all the work that she's done, but I also definitely want to mention how she's affected me personally as well. Because um, at that time, when I was going through Kavya's profile, I was also going through um, a breakup. And I just... I don't know why coincidentally a lot of poetry was showing up also on my Instagram feed and that's when I realized that poetry is such a reflection of your feelings and it validates your feelings 
it's not about it being right or wrong it's just about validating it in a very beautiful way and i think poetry can do that and i i, I hope more people do read poetry and and feel the same way because there's some sense of safety there's some sense of connection there's some sense of being part of something bigger that you feel when you read poetry right and i just want to read one of the the poems that actually moved me by kavya it's called i fix you and kavya i, I I I I actually before I do add Kavi I wanted to read this and I and I hope she's okay with that. It says I'll fix you. There's no love in loving a man you cannot fix. It's an old regime mother told me about. Where men with all their robustness were terrible terrible lovers. They held hands like trigger guns a woman's body was a full grown battlefield and i'm not complaining because they played their part of burning houses and tombstones to ashes there's no harm in weeping for the lost time history is the living proof of trauma you and i cup around each other's somber faces so like every day women play their part of swelling their chests while comforting men of war of being women enough and turning men into warm sentimental notions of love there's coal in her eyes the bangles jingle them back to reality the cotton saree is a brilliant masterpiece her hair smells of jasmine and her head's lowered enemy like what will you do i'll fix you so <laughs> my heart's racing while <laughs> reading that also and i remember reading it i was like first thing i was like yes this is this is the thing that women do we do this toxic thing of wanting to fix men but that's not what poetry is it's not about what's right or wrong it's about what you're feeling so yes this was my you know introduction to kavya and without further ado i'd like to invite her just a second hi kavya hi how are you i'm good how are you i'm sorry i read i already read a bit of your poem i did not do all I... the words but I I really needed to introduce you like that because that's how you had moved me. I heard that and I think you recited that one pretty well. It came out I think it made more meaning uh, when you recited it so beautifully. Beautifully. Yes because I I had a very personal connection to it and there were some verses that I could relate to extremely directly and hmm. the, that's the reason why I'm a bit more biased towards this one. So yeah. hi. Thank you so much for being here Kavya. It's all my pleasure. I'm I'm really excited for this one. Yes, you are. Thank you so much. And you know, before I dive into the questions for for the audiences who are not even in, you know, there are some audiences who are not going to be from India. And yeah. I wanted to understand. So your name is Kavya. Yes. Which Kavya translates which translates into poet or a poem. Yeah. So It you does. were born with this name. Yeah I mean surprisingly now even my parents make fun about it uh, that uh, we never knew that you'd actually uh, uh, write poetry eventually and become a poet and uh, people will know you through your poetry so I think I think it all just aligned so well for me that I stood up to my name Yes you did and you know that happens to me as well and I that's why I wanted to ask you if it's a stage name or if it's actually given to you because my name is Pratha and katha can be connected to culture and rituals and yeah. i am an interculturalist so I, just yeah. like you i think everything just aligned and i just happened to choose the field based on my name yeah so yes again thank you for being here kavya and have i missed anything out from your introduction uh, i hope no, not no just that uh, i take a lot of um, creative writing batches and i teach creative writing which is you know one of my favorite parts of what i do in my life 
because I love right. teaching creative right. writing. So I think that's that will always hold a special place in my heart. That's great. Uh, and, and you're just diving right into the question. And, and I'm going to give a little bit of my perspective as well because I think personally poetry for me reflects. It's very intricately interwoven into many aspects of our lives, right? So, you know, the religious hymns for me is like poetry, and there is, you know, probably protest slogans that we hear are like poetry, or even the songs that we listen to in popular culture. So it doesn't have to be ghazal, but even songs that we are listening to in popular culture is some form of poetry structured in a way, right? Yeah. So. For me, all of that is poetry. But does this resonate with you as well? Do you see poetry interwoven much more in our lives than we understand? Of course. I mean, honestly, for me, the first meaning of poetry started because when I was like really young, uh, my mother used to read the uh, Ramayan Chopai called Ramayan Chopai, and it's mostly like uh, poetry. It's the story of uh, Ram and Sita and Lakshman going uh, to the forest. to one was and it it resonated with me because it was very poetry like and my mother she didn't used to just read it she used to sing it and that's mm -hmm. i think i understood it better and i personally feel that people people honestly don't take poetry as seriously or as soulfully as it is supposed to be taken it is in religion it is in culture it is in love it is in life it is in soul it's within you it's i think it's everywhere so uh, mm -hmm. yes i poetry is definitely um culturally very woven because our languages are also very intercultural in their approach and when the language is intercultural and you you're using poetry uh you're using your language in your poetry how can it not be intercultural in that sense that's true and you know that people often say that uh, poetry can translate right but there's so many translated poetry is also that i have read in my yeah. life which hit me equally and and irrespective of the cultural context as well yeah right? so i just because like i said in the introduction to poetry such a not only a reflection of uh, culture through languages but it's also such a validation for your feelings and for yeah. me that last year that right and that's why it is so universal poetry becomes so universal and can cross boundaries because it's mostly the a reflection of how you're feeling or a validation of how you're feeling i just wanted to understand from you as a poet why did you choose poetry as your means of expression right because you're also a fictional writer if i'm not wrong yeah so yeah. you know but poetry i feel is your most beautiful form of expression as well but why yeah. did you choose poetry uh, you know actually my journey as a writer started with poetry and uh, the first ever piece of poetry I, i ever wrote was for my mother like when she felt she was i was very young she felt really sick and as a child i got really scared that a woman i see running around the house just could get it out but i was show her how to stand what she was going through and the first piece of poetry that i actually wrote was was in hindi uh, um and then uh, lyrics and uh, poems and mostly love poems and poems full of expression i think for me i don't know maybe for some people it is very difficult to write poems but for me i think it flows very naturally i'm blessed i feel i'm really blessed that way that when i want to write poems i'm not going to sit 10 hours on it i'm just going to sit and be done with it in 10 to 15 minutes <laughs> so yeah i think for me personally it's soulful it's the most soulful way of expressing yourself Am I audible? I think I lost you there for yeah. a second. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're audible. Yeah. So your last sentence. Yeah. 
Ayo, uh... Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. It's a bit of a lag. But um, just like taking that a bit further, right? Taking the idea of soulfulness a bit further and of course looking at it from my lens because I think soul is something that's very much within. Yeah. And now I just wanted to like ask you about the external of it. Right? Why, yeah. why do you think poetry can translate across cultures? Because like, if I read Ghalib or I read Toni Morrison, like, yeah. two completely different cultural contexts, styles of writing, yeah. uh, different themes, yet I am able to feel equally. And, hmm. you know, and, and, and as cultural icons, they have, like, they have not been something I've grown up with, yet it is able to translate. So why do you think that that happens, that poetry can translate? You know, because, because poetry is one form of art which you really cannot bind or restrict in any particular form. I think it's very free flowing. you know. Mm. And when I teach poetry and I teach a lot, I teach poetry to a lot of people, uh, then one thing I tell them that with fiction, you still have to make sense. With poetry, you can be completely senseless and it will still make sense. <laughs> you know? Right? And the thing about poetry is you've written it in a particular way, but it is not supposed to be understood in that way. Everyone will have a different version of how they relate, correlate, affiliate with that one piece of poetry. With fiction, there's one understanding of it. There's one line of uh, uh, there's one line of happening that people understand it in a particular way, even if it's sci-fi or fantastic, fantastic or fantasy or whatnot. But but mm -hmm. with poetry, that's just not possible. No two people will understand the same poetry the same way. That's true. You know, and that's exactly why it's so free flowing that you you put it in any culture, you put it in any religion, and people correlate and connect it. It's a form of expression, a form of spreading across a mess, a form of relatability, a form of just even not completely understanding the meaning, the beauty in it, you know, the aspects of poetry. That is why it is so intercultural, it's cultural in its, in its origin. Yeah. And, but, you know, what struck me with that was that it just comes back to me that you teach poetry. Is and this is a bit off tangent or as well that is coming to understand. Can one learn how to write poetry? Because for you, it just does come naturally, and I do understand poetry has structure to it, and there's a certain way that there's a there's some nat to poetry as well. It's not all emotion. So, but still, do you think everybody can be a poet? Uh, no. I I don't think everyone can. Mm. I feel. Anything, for sure, anyone in this world can write, but mm. not everyone can be a poet. Something that I deeply believe in because really, I think with fiction, you can still make it till you make it. With fiction, you can still be very upper layered in your approach or meaning. With poetry, till the time you're deep out with it, till the time you're soulful with it, it just doesn't resonate with anyone. For poetry to it has to be soulful and meaningful. And it should come from really the insecurities, the deep interest in being, you know. Mm. Uh, when you ask me about can I teach, can people learn poetry, can I, can I teach, what I really do when I say I teach, I make people aware about the different forms of poetry, the different mm. types of poets the different time periods of poems that existed and how it has changed over time. Mm -hmm. You know, just giving them a big awareness. I really, what I really do is promote people to read more poetry to be able to write more poetry. Mm -hmm. And what I really do is them about the poems that they can do to make their poetry stand out. Poetry can never be taught, you ask me. It has to come mm -hmm. from the 
you can definitely yeah so but you can definitely ornament yeah so what right? you plan so, is inspire them and show them inspirational work that yeah, gives I them i for them the vast variety of poems poems that have existed over times and what they should look at to be able to reach that level mm and i mean you can kind of blend it in with the next question that i'm about to ask you because like it came to me when you said that you kind of show when you're teaching how poetry has changed right how poetry has changed from before and the styles of writing have changed from before i'd love for you to shed some light on that of how poetry has you know transcended towards time and i i can still feel equally more by a poetry that has been written centuries ago and that yeah. a poetry that I read now and right? so that transcends but still the styles have changed so some uh you can just shed some light on that and also i feel maybe again it's coming from a bias i don't know if it holds true to everybody i feel yeah. love the theme in poetry has been so prominent right and yeah. the most powerful poems that have ever read have either been about love or they've been mm. about hate right so it's yeah. that hate, hate can be discrimination or anything that can come under hate but the most powerful poetry that i've read have been about love and everything yeah. that love comes with including heartbreak so do you think that holds true firstly <laughs> and secondly is there going to be any other theme that is actually as powerful as love is you know for me me honestly i i am a sucker for love poems me love poems are my of course i try to experiment i there are a lot of other themes and topics that i really like exploring like uh, for, for what the kind of i write 90% of those would be love poems but i would also yeah. cover the to those love poems there'll be patriarchy there'll be feminism there'll be um a sort of inherent household discomforts that existed between men and women in the previous times in the current times there'll be political satires there'll be haikus there'll be uh, nonsense poems as well my favorite are nonsense poems and uh, the thing is i don't think poetry can do without love so really it needs love to thrive I really feel it prospers, grows, blooms when there is love in it. You know, I think we'll never get out of fashion. I will never get bored of love poetry. It can be so experimental, so distinct. Even now, even though we've been writing love poems for I don't know hundreds of years, but but you can still be distinct and beautiful with your love poems, and it will resonate with someone or the other. Yeah. And I think the other promise team. Of course, our, our current social political scenario. Um, there's a lot of poems being written by young Indian poets like Akhil Katyal, Meena Kandaswamy is my favorite. All these poets, they they talk about um, the issues. I mean, for me, Meena Kandaswamy, I I'm actually reading with militancy by Meena Kandaswamy, and she really just. Um, her poems are so aggressive and on, and they hit right in the heart. They are all about talking about casteism and how things are going wrong. They talk about people. You know, in today's times, and Kamala Das in previous times did the same thing. So, how has poetry mm. changed, evolved over time? I think earlier people really had a very soft approach with language. I think yeah. now we are seeing more. the face raw edgy sharp hit changeful with our poetry you know mm. that where the whole the spoken word poetry also comes into picture because you can just repeat your poems out loud and express it through your face and through your hand gestures to impact so many people with that you know right kamla krishna kandu swami talked about the same thing but kamla das has a very softer approach satirical yet soft It means that the Swami is on your face. She make you feel mm. bad, bad, but do it. You know? <laughs> she make you feel bad that you haven't felt these feelings before, or you haven't been aware of this. But like here, take the most raw part of me that I feel on a daily basis. 
absolutely but i think over time has changed culture has changed tradition has changed times have changed and have changed situations and changing that arise with each time the way people are writing has also changed the issues have changed right yeah yes i, I also feel like women i mean so that women didn't have voice there was always uh, you know groups of women who has been voicing their anger and opinions in any generation that we look at right but i think now because the content is so so much more accessible as well and yeah. reach can be much more we are kind of getting to listen to the anger of yeah people who have been largely in the fringes or who have been forced to be in the fringes as well so you know like you said who are talking about caste or yeah. women talking about their roles in society or even even women and talking about their patriarchy within the own within their own house and talking about it with anger i think again anger which is can also uh, these are like strong feelings that really can resonate so i think earlier but it was very elitist you know only a select mm-hmm. few people had to it select few people were attending to it and now it is all over the internet every other person is writing poetry as you said it's more accessible now yeah right and i mean and i know i can think of one poet who tried to be aggressive time but she only got famous after she died and that's silvia mm she was aggressive with her poems like daddy and lady lazarus and what not but then mm. people they thought it's too vocal it's too confessional it's, that's not some people even didn't offer saying that expressing your personal emotions poetry did not and, resonate time but that, had been alive today imagine the kind of impact she would have made with her poems yeah and, and i'm sure she is making impact because she does inspire poets like you as well but this one thing do you get that feedback sometimes that your poems are too vocal maybe or they they really uh, feel the emotion do you get that i mean um, yes i have for some pieces for sure uh that it's very important when you feel like poems are too too strongly worded you, you're supposed to uh, add the word trigger warning before you begin the poem right because not everyone is prepared to read stuff like that not everyone i think uh, i am too vocal in the issue to talk about but but that's the only way i see expressing them and making an impact i can't be in my approach with those topics mm. and do you think enough people are actually reading poetry or is it just me that i feel they aren't and maybe the reality is completely different because now spoken word has started to come up and again like we mentioned about accessibility i do see a lot of instagram accounts just like yours as well wherein you know poets have found their voice and an audience however yeah. i don't feel it's populated enough or not as prominent as it used to be you know previously yeah i mean i agree. i think uh, yes read poetry but only want to read poetry till the time it is free right you can free read it on facebook on instagram on linkedin on wherever you want to and on all these social media apps like uh, ttt and what not but the moment somebody reads a poetry book because because i act as a writer i edit poetry books i edit fiction books hardly 50 people will buy a poetry book 50 60 people that's it the conversion rate for buying poetry is very very less which makes me really sad but but people want to free stuff that's the thing that's so true i never thought about it that way because i myself i just own three poetry books one of them is pablo neruda and two i i forget their names when you were and they had an exhibition at somewhere at some beautiful library in bangalore and that's how i ended up buying those two but yeah in totality i have three poetry books and the rest i read on 
because they are also available for free online right yeah. i have poets to start gate keeping ki nahi rahenge aap mere ko paise to i i mean i mean this realization been in my corner i've been writing poetry ever since i was 8 or 9 years old right and till my corner i did not have a single poetry book in my hand i was just writing poetry not reading it and i felt so guilty for not reading good poetry books that's when mm-hmm. habit of buying poetry books began and it changed my life because it helped me grow so much more in in my po- talents or my poetic abilities um, which mm. could not be otherwise that's what i feel how old were you again when i i understand how old were you when you started buying those poetry books on your own uh in college i was in my first year of college and i did my eighth grade in delhi and and i felt like i did not own a single poetry book Yeah. So yeah, I think that was the shift for you as well. Yeah, imagine if poetry books were actually, you know, a, a, a conscious buy for household. Right? Yeah, like people would consciously buy, or parents would consciously buy, probably for their children as well. I think yeah. we would have more play. Yeah. Yes, for sure. But Sunita says she's been collecting poetry books all her life. So she's one of those amazing people who collects poetry books. Thank you for sharing that, Sunita. You were saying something? Yeah, I said that's so nice. I mean, I very rarely see people, but when I do, I feel very happy. <laughs> And also, the other thing that resonated with me that you said was about privilege, right? Poetry did was a uh, uh, I think English poetry. I think English literature. It was yeah. very, very privileged thing, right? So you could write poetry just like painting, like any other art form. I'm talking about Western culture. Uh, you had to either come from privilege to actually write them or paint fine art, or you had to yeah. be of privilege to know how to read. poetry because yeah. so you have to know how to sometimes read poetry as well and know how to kind of appreciate art too so yes a privilege plays a plays a huge role in who we let write our poetry and you can. had to be to publish your poetry it wasn't just publish anyone i mean even earlier times publishing fiction was so much more easy than publishing poetry mm has that yeah. change now i mean because you have been published so has that yeah. changed a uh, you know but still in comparison if you ask me pub, as, as i said i work on both sides of the spectrum i'm an author i'm a poet i want to get my <laughs> i work for the publishing houses and i and i review books and I accept and reject books both poetry and fiction the thing is that publishers really are looking for fiction books because it is financially more feasible for them right because poetry books don't sell uh, so really just like limit very limited two or three publishing houses who, who are looking for good poets but they are very well aware that the audience is very very limited mm-hmm. and they're okay and they're confident with that this reminds yeah. me of the publishing houses even for children's books right so when they're very inclusive diverse stories Usually, the publishing houses are the small independent publishing houses. They will never be large scale publishing houses. Have so much access, and that and and that uh, internal battle that I always have with myself that there are not enough diverse books for children with diverse yeah. characters that are available because the publishing houses that have the most accessibility are usually uh, in the US or the UK. Right. And yeah. They, they already have a quality problem with especially the yeah, for that in fictional books. So yeah. yeah, I mean, I I I just hope people start buying more from independent publishing houses and as well and of course more poet poet poems, uh, poetry books too. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was just wondering, and I hope it's not the same poem that I already <laughs> I've already recited, but. Uh, Can I please request you to kind of recite a favorite poem that you've written, and your oh. favorite piece of work, or any other piece of work as well? It's okay, but uh, I'd love for um, the audience 
audience and myself also to be to have the privilege of listening to you think about your work right okay uh, yeah. i mean um i think one of the reasons that i personally like it, it like really resonates with me is uh, women like me are love sick again i love poems see i told you i'm obsessed with love so okay it's a long one i'm going to read it <laughs> women like me are love sick my face is shard of a broken stick in the slender palms the shiver like my mother's hands from the throat i've had men waiting my gully to call me their own stationary shop right side of small compasses for rupees 10 to watch 10 a month to keep them alive mother says women need to heart it's repeating with me with her eyes closed but i feel love at 15 and i thought young girls aged in young these promises are the enemy clan so i put my hair on my shoulder to share lunch i would be more often than he should he look like his mother vishal seems to have seen but fear them all i fear them all because at 15 stuff was going against the law that girls don't go to heaven they are remembered and talked about right here and now so some days i'm simply in love with them but most days i'm regretting thinking about them thank you mother i am keen and still full of love but just like you my hands Uh, while making me roti i down every time a boy with my house i don't wait for them i wait for you to say you're a good girl but that hasn't happened too and now it feels like all of this while i'm failing at both because men with promises are far gone and women like me are now sabe <laughs> I don't like you. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, not for the, in in the sense that. Yeah, I think even even with I'll fix you, and even with because I've read this poem, right? Hmm. It's beautiful for me to kind of hear you read it as well, and I do know, and I also I feel that you. also right for women yeah and and probably that's why it feels is to me much much more yeah. and yeah sometimes sometimes it catches hold of me when i'm least expecting it to which i think is beautiful for a poet to <laughs> to observe or be a part of someone's life in that way yeah but i but i must say i don't know where you go within yourself to kind of find that but yeah. i'm glad that you do i don't know if it's difficult for you to go to that place i don't know if it's healing for you or is self sabotage for you <laughs> for you to kind of go to that place and bring back something yeah. beautiful well then i think i think one thing that you say is the biggest reason that poetry and not just my poetry i think any poet's poetry really because it is very personal in its approach um mm. you're very personal till that time you're not looking inside of you and you're not piercing someone out there you can not cannot make that impact with you i think it has to be it has to be a lot autobiographical it has to really tell it to people but you have to include a little bit of yourself in your poems to reach out to people that's what i feel mm. and, and before i had 
towards the last question. I just I was I want to understand from you how can we get people to read more poetry or how can we get them to buy more poetry? Do you have a solution to that or um should I be talking to a publisher about this and have a separate episode? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I wish, I wish, I really want to do that. I think, uh, I think in general, really, where it starts, it should start within in schools. I think uh, in schools, people do not even have an idea that they can take poetry up as a career. That they can take creative writing up as a career, or they they can um, forget about making money, even if they don't want to take it as a career. They can still feel passionate about it and do it. And I know a lot of young people write. a lot of young boys write poetry but they are very uh, secret about it you know um i think i think the whole idea of reporting that secrecy and making workshops available at the school level to see the genuine or uh, the interest of the developing poetry that is why how we would involve more people write poetry more people would want to read those poems as well true that's true yeah i am uh, I usually end my conversations with this question from my guests because I think that I am in the process of change always as well. So, Kavya, I want to ask you. You can answer it from a perspective of a poet or anything else, as a woman or from whatever place it wants to come from. Different sense. what the tech uh sorry i think i think i lost you for a second can you repeat the question if there's usually i end the conversations with this question if there, okay if there's something that you'd like to change within yourself or outside of yourself what would it be Hmm. I think I'll talk about the within. I for now, I think uh, I think uh, I think one of my big things that I looked out on my art, love for poetry, and that I just stop writing it one day, and I just the inspiration or the love or the soulfulness within me to be able to write a poem. That's that's one of my biggest fears in life. Uh, I think I really want to get rid of that fear. I mean. I mean, I know that people think that creativity flows very naturally, but over the years, I've realized that it comes a lot out of practice. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. not just to flow or to be inspired and write one thing like that. If that's that's how you want to live and make your career, up, you know, out of. Mm. So uh, I just want to get rid of that in. Within that, that there'll come a day when I can't write poems. That's my biggest fear. I, uh, yeah, I completely relate to that. Because my fear is writing fiction. So the book that uh. I've written for children is a non-fiction. I've written a non-fiction children. So, so I do, <laughs> I do have that fear, and I know how much it takes to then. Yeah. Put your work out there with that fear. You don't want the work to come from a place of fear, but yeah. you end up doing it with that. And I think that that courage, right? It's not absence yeah. of fear. It's that you do you do things irrespective of it being present. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kavya, for giving your time. And before we go, do you want to share something with the audience about where they can find you, or there are courses coming up by Versus Society as well if people want to sign up? Yeah, um, of course. Uh, firstly, thank you, Sri, for inviting. I had such a beautiful, uh, deep chat with you. Much needed. I think I've I, I've had a like this for a long time with someone. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, you can you can find me on Instagram. Uh, on my channel, uh, and uh, of course, my organization, Voice of Silence, is conducting um, uh, a poetry, uh, a creative fest, a uh, workshop fest this March. If you want to learn uh, poetry, like storytelling, spoken word, uh, you want to know more about how this industry works, so you can understand how freelance content creation works. You can definitely check the page and register for yourself uh, for the workshops.
That's amazing. Thank you so much for doing the work that you're doing and propagating this further. And I hope that I have the chance to meet you someday, or if you're ever performing in Bombay, please let me know. And I'll absolutely. Thank absolutely. you so much, Tanya. Have a great day. Most welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining in, everybody, and staying. Bye. Bye. Bye.